y'all, it's Gina with Thread Graffiti. I just wanted to show you a little project that I've been working on. I did a little blog and I showed in the blog how you make the checkerboard and the tic-tac-toe set. So this is super simple. These are just two and a half inch squares and I just quilted the top and then I added the back and then I made some little straps so that you could roll it up and tie it, or you can fold the four ends in and stick your tic-tac-toe thing in there and fold it up and tie it. I had a, I had a better plan there. Um, it's this one. At any rate, you can fold it like that and then tie it. But what I'm going to show you is how to make a little bag for your tic-tac-toe and your checker pieces. So I showed in the blog how I just spray painted these, the color to match what I was picking. And so I made some extra uh, little two and a half inch squares when I was cutting this and I knew I was going to try to make a bag. And so I didn't have a pattern or anything. I just added the pieces. These strip pieces were actually two of these and I just cut them in half. And so um, that was what was left over. And then I added the, uh, the zipper on the top. And so I just had some leftover pieces of black and then I boxed the corners. So that makes it, I'm gonna dump out these pieces. That makes it more square versus just a flat little bag. And so since my name is Thread Graffiti, I put a little graffiti fabric on there that I have because my niece is super into art. And so on this one, don't tell her, she'll never know, she's too young to care. But I did not do binding on the edges. But this will basically show you what the inside of it looks like. And so I just left the, the raw edges and I boxed the corners. And that just means that you fold it and you cut off the edge and you sew it in there. And so that just makes it boxy. If you don't want to do that, you just leave the corners the way that they are. But it's a really, really simple bag. And since it's a fancy zipper, you don't have to add the zipper in. You just add it right on the top and you stitch right on top of it. So you don't have to do any of the, any of the things that you have to do with a, a standard zipper. So I'm going to show you how to do that. We're going to use a 10 inch, um, a 10 inch layer cake, a uh, Riley Blake, a Lori Holt one, and then I'm going to use this cute little zipper on the top and I'm going to show you how to make a little bag and you can do anything you want. You can do strips or squares, or you could just do two pieces of fabric. If you just want to do two pieces of fabric, fabric, the options are endless. So I'm going to cut these pieces and show you how to make this. Okay, so what we have done to get ready to make our bags is I got a 10 inch layer cake and I cut uh, 12 two and a half inch strips. So I just cut off strips from various pieces that I liked. And so they're just gonna be the 10 inches and then two and a half from the layer cake. And so then I cut a backing piece, which is going to be the liner. And that is 10 this way by 22 this way. And so then what we did is I sewed together the uh, strips, the 12 strips, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And so I sewed the strips together and then I'm going to take it to the iron and I'm going to press these all flat. I'm going to press them open so that they are flatter. And then I'm going to show you what to do. It's super simple. Once we get them... Um, once we get them pressed, we're just going to take it to the uh, to the machine and we're just going to sew these top ends and it's just going to fold together like that and poof, we're going to have a bag. It's going to be so cool. Okay, so I'll be right back and I'll show you what's next. Okay, everything is all pressed and we've got it pressed open so that it will lay as flat as we can get it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use leftover batting. Since I'm a long arm quilter, I have a ton of leftover batting, so that's what I'm going to use next. And so I'm gonna lay the good side down and I'm gonna take it to the sewing machine and I'm gonna just do some super basic 
quilting on it, just on my regular Juki. I'm not gonna put it on the long arm, but you certainly can. And um, that's what I did on the uh, checkerboard here is I put that on the long arm. So you can do lots of different things, but this time I'm just gonna put it on, uh, put it under the Juki and then I will show you how. So I'm not using the backing piece yet. And if you want to, you can put just a piece of, of muslin or whatever on the back if it makes you feel more comfortable, but I'm not. I'm just gonna use the top and the batting and I'm gonna take it to the sewing machine. And then I will show you what's next. You can also use a soft and stable. Annie's makes a soft and stable. Um, and there's also, there's tons of different brands on the, on the market. You can use this um, Bozel. It has like an interfacing on both sides or a sticky adhesive so that it's, it's easier to, to kind of make the piece and then you can just sew it together. So there's all different kinds of ways that you can do it, but this is how I'm going to do it today. So I'm going to go do just a little bit of uh, quilting and I'll be right back. Okay. I have the strips at the machine here and I thought I'd show you. So I have it on a three, I have on the number three, the stitch length. So it's a little bit farther away and I'm just going just to the right of each line. So that's all I'm going to do. And I'm just lining my presser foot up with the seam of the fabric. The lines are super, not, not super straight and that's okay. But if you want them to be super straight, then have at it. <laughs> I'm not using my walking foot. You might want to. Um, I rarely do. I just push my machine to the, I just, I just hardly ever put it on. And I'm only dealing with these two layers, so it's not super thick and it's not a very big project, so. But if you were gonna do straight lines on a larger quilt, I would definitely suggest using your walking foot. So we just have our little strips and we could go this way. I could measure out a certain amount and and go this way. Um, and I mean, I guess I could, but I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm just gonna leave it like this and then we're gonna go put it together. Okay, so we have, we have our little pieces here. And so they were two and a half by 10 and I just um, trimmed off the batting, the excess batting. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip it inside out just to look at it because this is what we're gonna do with it. Just like, our, just like our little bag that I made for my niece, this is basically what it's going to look like. So the two pieces fold in, and so we want to trim these straight, because if you look right there, my, my lines are definitely not straight. So we're gonna trim them off straight, and then we're going to attach the backing. So let's take this, and I'm just gonna line it up with the lines on my table and I'm gonna trim it off so that it's straight. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the other side. And my little seam right here is not straight. It's okay, it's gonna be covered up. So that's all right. And so now what it's gonna do is it's gonna fold in like that and like that. And then we're gonna put our cute little fancy zipper on there and I'll show you how to do that in just a second but that's what it's going to look like just so you can kind of get an idea of what we're doing all right so now we're going to take our backing piece and we are going to sew it good side to good side so both of the pretty sides are facing each other and then we're going to take it to the machine and we're going to sew right here and then we're gonna sew right here and that's it. And then I will be right back and then we'll move to the next part. Okay, so I sewed the edges, the two edges, and now we can turn it inside out. And so now that's what it looks like. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this right here to the iron and squish it real, squish it real nicely and press it. Same thing with the other side. 
Okay, so now it's all pressed. There's the inside, and so we're gonna decide how we want the zipper. And since these zippers are the fancy pretty kind, we're just gonna, we're gonna sew it right on top. And so we're using the same color thread in my machine, so you're not even gonna see it. You're just gonna stitch right on there. And so you don't have to do anything with the, like you have to do with a normal zipper. So all you really need to make sure is that the fabric that you have is not longer than your, not wider than your zipper. So ours is coming inside and we're just gonna snip that off in the end. And so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put this on the, uh, actually see, I'm already thinking regular zipper. We're just gonna take it to the machine. We're gonna sew that on there. Okay, we're ready to sew. I'm not gonna use a zipper foot because on this Juki, it's a pretty small space anyway. Um, just try to make sure you don't get your edge, you know, of the fabric right up onto the zipper. Otherwise it will mess up your, will mess up your zipper. Well, it won't mess up your zipper. You just won't be able to use your zipper as well. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to do another little stitch just on the very edge. Just so that it doesn't flap over. See, so there it is, that's one side. And now we're gonna open up the zipper. And then we're gonna make sure that we line it up so that you're not all crooked and wonky. And I'm just gonna use a wonder clip right here just so I can keep it, make sure I keep it where I want it. Actually, just thin just a little. Okay. And now, we're just going to fold it up a little bit. And add it on there. Again, same thing, just make sure you don't get too close to the edge. Just so that the fabric underneath doesn't get in the way of the zipper. And then we have a cute little zipper. Make sure you didn't sew over your zipper parts or sew over, yeah, your, and everything works perfectly. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna leave it, well, we're gonna close it and then we're gonna flip it inside out. And then we're going to continue to use a couple of wonder clips. We're going to open our zipper because once we close this, we're going to be locked out. So open your zipper and make sure when you're sewing, you keep your ends together. And I just pushed my thread out of the end of my needle with my fabric. So I'm going to get that rethreaded. All right, and so I'm gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna do just a little bit more than a quarter of an inch. pulled a little bit and make sure you kind of watch your ends so you don't get too close all 
right, so now we're gonna flip it and make sure we like it and make sure that we didn't make any mistakes anywhere before we trim anything. And, and I mean, just make sure you didn't like, you know, miss a piece or whatever. And if you wanna put like a little handle or a strap or anything like that, we would have just done that just now. So you would have tucked your little strap in with the seam and then sewn over it when you did what we just did. So if you want a little handle on it, that would have been the time. Okay, so you can leave it just like this if you want to. And poof, you're done. I mean, you can obviously go in and trim off your, your uh, threads. Or we can box off the corners just like I did with the other ones. And so that's what it looks like. Super simple. And if you box off your corners, I will show you what to do. Okay, so when you're boxing, oh, look at that. I just unthreaded my machine again. I keep grabbing it with my fabric when I pass by. Okay. And I've had this machine for like 12 years and I have no idea how to uh, use the automatic threader. It's okay. All right, so at this point you would want to, there's a couple of different things that you can do. You can trim these off, we don't need that. But you can, you can do binding on it, you can use a serger and serge those edges off, or you can leave them raw. If I leave the raw edge, what I usually do is take the machine and go down one more time. And I keep the seam real close to the edge and then you can go to your cutting board and just trim off that little bit. Um, if I'm not feeling, I do a ton of binding, so sometimes I don't feel like doing more binding. But at any rate, what I'll probably do is just trim that off a little bit. But if you're going to box your corners, this is what you do. You just take the edge and go like that. And if we hadn't just put that second seam in there, you could fold the, you could put the seam open. And then I usually take it to the one inch on your machine. My machine has a little one inch marker. So I take the very end of it and I backstitch and backstitch again. And then you can chop that off again with your scissors. And if you're going to do binding, you can just bind over the edge of it or you can take your serger to the edge of it. And then you will do the same thing on the other corner. Just fold it over. And I usually try to fold it the same direction as the other side. Um, and then we're gonna take it to the one inch and backstitch. And then snip it off. And so that already creates a little box on one side. Okay, now on this side, same thing. Take it to the one inch marked on your machine, back stitch. Oh, I'm, st I'm stuck on all my threads because I didn't trim them off first. And then trim that off. And then fold it the same direction as the other side. trim it off, and then we'll go look at our masterpiece. Okay, so we're done at the machine and we are now going to flip it inside out. And just use your fingernails or you can use the little clover pokers. They are this is a great thing to have. It's a little two point turner. It um, can do a couple of different things, but for if you're gonna be doing a lot of things where you're flipping stuff inside out, those are great to have. And I'll link it on the bottom. All right, and so there is our adorable little bag. And like I said, you could put a little handle 
on the side if you wanted to. You can use it, you know, for toiletries when you're traveling or whatnot. And then there is our fancy little zipper that we had to do very little. And you can also take it to the iron and kind of press right there and press it so that it kind of makes the box that you've created a little bit more defined. And so there's our little box here. And so it was exactly the same technique. These were just squares and strips. And so you can make it however you want to. So all you really need to do is just make your piece that's 10 by 22 or so and you know make that make that 10 by 22 piece whatever you want to you can make it squares or circles or you know strips or scraps or whatever so that's how you make the bag and again i'm going to show the reason why i made the bag is because i made my niece a little checkerboard and i just took a regular checkerboard that we had and it had the tic-tac-toe thing on the back of it from my son and so i just recreated those in fabrics and then I, I got the pieces from Amazon and then I just painted them to match and they're super cute. And so the strap just allows you to kind of fold it up or twirl it up just to keep it when you're not playing. So I hope that you will subscribe. This is a new channel. I'm a long arm quilter daily and I do a lot of work for Kimberly at the Fat Quarter Shop. And so um, I do like to do some personal stuff sometimes when I have time and um, if you'll subscribe, I would love that. So have a great day, and again, thanks for watching.